Hello, it's Neil Paddock here, and today we're going to look at Reaper and Sample Tank. So here goes. Let's fire up a Reaper. Now, I've already set up a file, but what we're going to do, okay, it's coming up at the moment with our ASIO control panel. I just literally click the middle of this and then click OK. It then fires up in this corner so that we know that the ASIO driver is working. Um, and this is one I prepared earlier, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So what we're going to end up with, if we work backwards, we should hear something like this. Okay, so how did we get to that? Well, what I'm going to do is mute that track and then we're going to start again. So I'm going to leave that track there just in case we get into trouble. But essentially, what we want to do is be able to open a new track. So here we go, track, insert new track, control and T. Um, so this is the second track. I want to say, first of all, that my computer has several extra bits and pieces plugged into it to make it work. I've got an AK MPK 49 keyboard and a Focusrite Sapphire USB 6 MIDI interface. So literally both the keyboard and the MIDI interface are plugged in with USB cables and that's it. Um, I think we'll go into other connections another time because I want to just focus on sample tank for a moment. So what's the first thing we do? Well we want to load up some kind of instrument on this track. So I click the FX button this opens up the filter list and if we come right down to the bottom it's basically asking me to type something in. So I'm going to type in sample tank and I'm going to pick from my list of things that come up I'm going to pick sample tank 2x, the VSTi version and I'm going to click OK. So first of all we're going to, we're, what we're doing is we're loading our track with a virtual instrument and here it is. Now, we've got nothing loaded as yet, as evidenced by this. And I have taken the liberty to set something up, a preset. But basically, let's do it from scratch. Let's do it the sort of difficult way. So we've got our instrument, and I'm going to actually drag that out of the way for a second because there's a few other things that I want to be able to do first. Now, I know from experience and from looking at manuals and various things that I need to arm the track if I want to hear anything. So that's the first thing that I do. Press that little red button there. I'm also going to press the speaker button, record monitoring off, and I'm going to change that to on. So our little AR button's gone red, our little speaker button's now got a black background. The last thing that I do on this track to get it ready is I go to the MIDI input section, I select my Akai MPK49, and I select all channels. Hope. Okay, so that should work now. And um, oh, look, we've done three minutes already. Let's get sample tank back. Now, does anything happen? If I play on my keyboard, you can see the red notes on the screen, but I'm not getting any sound. But also, if you look at the mixer channels up here and down here as well, I'm getting a little red bar which is showing activity, but we're not getting MIDI activity coming through the green bar, and that's what we need, so something's wrong. Well, there's two things that are wrong currently. The first thing is we actually haven't physically got anything loaded, so we can't really expect to hear it. So let's try and load something up. Now, with Sample Tank, you have to see some words appear in this window to know that a sound's been loaded. So I've double-clicked on drums, but nothing's happened. There's a little down arrow next to it. Let's try acoustic. Nothing. Let's, I'm going to skip bass drums because that's just boring, it's just a whole bunch of bass drums. Big Vintage, there we go, we've got Big Vintage, it's loaded. What happens? Okay, now hopefully you're going to be able to hear that. I'm playing the Akai MPK keyboard and I'm getting some drum sounds out of it, which is good. Now what if I want to um, uh, play a MIDI track? Well. I'm going to borrow this one. I think by holding down control and dragging, I should be able to drag that MIDI file, which is actually uh, an odd grooves MIDI file um, that I basically dragged over from Windows Explorer. Uh, just for the purposes of time now, uh, as we're at the five minute mark, I've just grabbed it from the previous track. 
Now, let's just check up there that uh, that's muted. We've got the red button for mute. So we're not going to hear anything on track one at all. So we're back to track two, the one we were interested in. I'm going to press stop. I'm going to press the left arrow, go to the start of the project, and press play. Shock horror, still nothing happens. Now, fortunately, we're a bit like I've solved this problem. Drums are always on MIDI channel 10. It's a MIDI convention, but it's easy to forget this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the MIDI channel with my left mouse button. See that little one there? I'm going to drag that until I get to channel 10. And now, when I press play, hearts in the other, it works. So there's a couple of things we need to be able to do. By default, Sample Tank is going to give you a channel 1, which is okay for playing the keyboard. In fact, what I'll demonstrate is what I'm going to do is go on to the second um, part now. And I'm going to double click Big Vintage again. And this time I'm going to select channel 1. So now, can you see on the second one where this 2 is, I'm actually physically playing the keyboard and I'm getting sound, get the green bar. But if I go back to what we were doing before and play the pattern, the MIDI pattern here, without touching the keyboard, it's actually playing the top one. Yeah. So I think I think that's a bit quirky. Um, but anyway, that's we're at seven minutes now. So I hope that that's given you a bit of insight into how to set up a drum track on Sample Tank. We've got a MIDI file in there that is playing it. This is Neil Paddock from howtoprogramdrums.com and I look forward to speaking to you on the next video. Until then, bye for now.